Hey kids, welcome to the Style and Rumble Drawing Time thing. Today we're going to talk about some drawing exercises you can do in your sketchbook that's super helpful for character animation, especially 2D character animation, but 3D too. Like you shouldn't avoid the drawing stuff if you're a 3D animator, even if you just get into the baseline of figure drawing and doing gestures on the regular, it's going to help build up your brain catalog of different poses and stuff and different personalities and the way people move and act. So super, super useful. I highly recommend drawing from life because if you're drawing from images, you have a lot of cheats that are available to you. Today I'm going to be using a gesture drawing tool website. It used to be called Pixel Lovely. Now it's on lineofaction.com and it's just called a figure drawing practice tool. It's easy enough to Google one of these. There's a bunch of them on the internet. But when you're drawing from an image, you can really utilize shape more than form. So if you're not really sure how shoulders work, you can kind of cheat it by looking at the shapes that you are seeing in the image and using those shapes to get a fairly reasonable representation of the, the pose without actually understanding the structure behind that, which is, it's fine if you're an illustrator, but if you're an animator, you need to be able to move that character around. You don't get the luxury of just one beautiful pose that you can spend 50 hours on. You have to do every single drawing over and over again. You move the character around, change the, the angle from what you're viewing it at, things like that. So understanding how that structure works is super helpful. And when you're drawing from life, you're kind of forced to use those muscles a little bit more. But since I am at a computer and I can, I have no way of setting up a good life drawing set up at the mall or wherever, I'm going to be using this. Um, I'm going to use covered models, no nudity on here because I like my channel to be friendly for some of my teacher friends who show these th things in their classes, no awkwardness there, or like my younger audience. It's good to really practice at a, a a whole bunch of different time ranges. When you're working with a 30 second gesture, you have to very much focus on the action. You don't have a lot of time to worry about details and stuff like that. And on a 10 minute drawing, you can really dive in there and get into the structure and stuff. You know, when I first started doing gestures, 10 minutes didn't seem like long enough. And now 10 minutes seems like an eternity just because you, you do grow these muscles as you practice. So I did this initially and I tried to talk while I did gestures and it went really poorly. <laughs> so I decided to just enjoy my gesture time and then do a voiceover later, which apparently I can't use my camera and my microphone at the same time. So I, my head has disappeared, but I just want to talk about, well, first I'm going to go over just quick drawing gestures and my way of doing it is a little bit more contoury, just because over the years I've developed a shorthand language that works for me. And these gestures that I'm doing in the background are two minutes a piece, and they're sped up to about 1.5 times the speed. I'll put the actual speed on the screen. I didn't want to make it go too fast so you could see what I was drawing, but I have some box stuff at the end I wanted to keep in the video. But there are lots of different schools of gesture and quick drawing. And I say, I, I want to just say gesture and quick drawing because some people get really huffy over gesture and they're like, oh, well, gesture is only when you're capturing the action. That's it. That's all gesture is the end. Do it this way. And I don't want you guys to be all like, well, you're quick drawing. You're not doing gestures. <laughs> but the important part of gesture is, um, for me, it's just you're using your arm as an intermediary between your brain and something that you're seeing and trying to bring that pose into your brain. So you're looking at a person or eat, I mean, you can do gestures of objects or animals or anything you want. And you're just trying to capture the movement and the feeling and the energy of that pose through whatever means feels great to you. <laughs> Who cares? Some people think, you have to do really minimal lines and every line needs to count. But other schools, like I came from a school that studied the Nicolaides method that the book is called The Natural Way to Draw. And they use, they're very super liney. They're like, just line the guts out of it and just feel your way around until things look right. So my way is very liney and it started becoming very contoury as time went on just because I was taking a lot of different exercises that I was doing and they've sort of developed into this language. So I don't want you to look at any person's gesture and feel like that's the right way because I don't think that's the right way to go about it. I think you should definitely 
research different styles of gesture and practice different ways. So spend time trying the minimal line method and see how few lines you can use to capture gesture. Then look at the natural way to draw Nicolaides and see what it feels like to use a nice thick chalk to try and capture drawings and do it that way. If you focus too much on contours, you might not be capturing the movement the way you want to. But if you feel too trapped by using this squiggly line method or having stick people, as people say, then that also might frustrate you too. So I think the best thing to do really is to just try as many different things as you come across. And, and don't just throw it out. Like try a week's worth of minimalist gestures. Try a week's worth of uh, Nicolaides style many line gestures with a nice thick chalk. Use crayon, use paint, use digital, use whatever you want. Try all sorts of different things. The important thing is to just really try and focus on the action of what you're seeing. So personally, I like to lean towards contours, like a mix of contour and like through lines, because I like to utilize every tool I have to describe the direction of the forms and get the movement as possible. So if I think a contour is going to be the right approach, then I'll use a contour. If I feel like, uh, like a through line or like a squiggly line is going to work better, I'll use that. So I don't police myself when I'm doing them and whatever gives the most information is what I'll go to. I also do a lot of ghost lines. So when I started doing gesture initially, my stuff was much more busy. It had a lot more through lines and thinking and, and exploration going around through the form. But as time went on, I spent like a lot of my lines just kind of moved into my brain or I'll just ghost them with my hand. So you might see the cursor moving around, but no actual marks being formed because I'm just drawing in my head, if that makes sense. And another thing that's really important to remember is the goal of this is not to have beautiful drawings. Maybe you'll get some gestures that look super cool. It's like, man, I'm, I'm a Hirschfeld print right here on my hands. And that's awesome if that happens. But most of the drawings, like 95% of my gesture drawings just look like trash. But the goal isn't to have a beautiful drawing you can hang on your wall. The goal is to learn something. So if you're diving in here and finding some useful stuff and starting to build that catalog of images in your brain, that's the most important thing. So for this drawing, for example, we've got a lot of action here. So you want to think about where the person's weight is centered. Like their foot, you can see their foot is directly below their neck. So that's an important landmark there when you're trying to recreate this pose later. If you're really thinking of like how high her shoulder is being pushed or head is pushed down more, I haven't brought the head down. I think I do get around to the head being down farther. Um, that's a good thing. But the important thing is you're just collecting all that information. And the more you do it, the more you're going to be able to collect as time goes on. So in this one, for example, the legs are don't feel like the important thing. So the skirt and things, I, I'll hit the major landmarks of the knees, but not spend a ton of time making sure every fold is really working there. I really want to get the curve of the her back and her shoulder being right up by her neck there and get her feeling really curled in on herself. And I also find that in this gesture, the hands are really important. The hands are telling a story of their own. So I'll spend more time on the hands in this drawing than in other ones where I feel like that's not really where the story is being told. But like I said, there's no hard and fast rules. So don't feel bound to anything and don't I mean because these are two minutes long and two minutes I feel like I really like between two and five minutes that's like my favorite amount like because I want to get so contoury one minute doesn't give me enough time for that <laughs> but any more than five minutes and I'm just starting to clean things up at that point so just try a bunch of stuff and and don't limit yourself when you're first starting off. If you're not someone who's been, like I've been doing gestures now for 14 years, 15 years. How old am I? 13 years. <laughs> 
I don't know, but a long time. So I have kind of my staples now. And maybe I should back away from my staples. I should get out of my own comfort zone. But don't limit yourself before you start. So don't say, oh, one minute's not enough time. Force yourself to do one minute ones because it's making you think about different things. So I've just sped up the last couple because I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over again. I highly recommend gesture drawing to anyone who is interested in character animation or just cartooning, things like that, because it's worth its weight in gold. It doesn't take any time at all. It's perfect to do on the go. So you're on the streetcar, you can draw a one minute drawing of somebody who's sitting there on their phone or reading the paper or doing whatever. It's really easy to take everywhere. It doesn't need to be pretty. It's just about learning and it's a wonderful drawing tool. It's also, it's got a huge time benefit. So you spend 30 minutes doing gestures that are one minute, two minute, five minutes, you're going to get a ton of stuff in there where you may just be slopping around, not really knowing what to draw for 30 minutes. And then all that time is wasted. So definitely get into this and do it a lot because it's going to be worth its weight in gold. So I'm going to go back to my original video where I talked a little bit about box drawings because that actually went halfway. Okay. While I was talking and drawing at the same time. Yeah, so awkward transition, a go. Final thing I'll suggest that you guys do is box people. So in this case, I would take each part of this character and I'll even, boop, this would be a longer, let's say a 10 minute exercise. So I'm just going to give myself some quick proportions here. And if you're saying, oh, but that's cheating. This isn't cheating. In real life, you could just use your pencil and measure out the proportions of a person. It's just way easier in digital. Measuring is important. The number one thing, if you, especially if you're doing portraits, measure twice, draw once. Like measure so much if you're going for a likeness. But this exercise is about bringing your structural drawing and your perspective together with your figure drawing. All right. So we're going to look at this rib cage. His back shoulder is much, much lower, but his shoulders are not like you can move. You, you can move your shoulders independent of your rib cage. So you're going to want to get as many landmarks as you can. It's hard with the deep shadows and stuff to really see how straight his rib cage is. But I feel like it's pretty straight because you can't get a big curve here. Like if his, if you were con extending the spine and it was continuing on the way of the shoulders, his head would be back here. So I'm going to give him a fairly straight rib cage. Boop. And we're looking at the back just a little bit so we can do this and then we're looking at the front of his pelvis and most pelvises tilt this way. Boop. There we go. I've already put this too high. I got my lines there and I just ignored them. Boop. And then we're going to the front. We're looking at the head sort of like this and we're drawing our box man. Maybe you want to draw yourself some uh, perspective lines depending on how finicky you're being. If you're in an actual life drawing setting, you could all, you could, I mean, your eye line is going to be the horizon of your thing. So if you're looking at the model and they're slightly above you, let's say here is going to be your eye line. You can draw in your perspective and then you know you're going to be looking like halfway point of the rib. So you're going to be looking down on the pelvis. You're going to be looking up at the head. But if the head is tilting towards you, then obviously it's going to tilt down. But just having an idea of where your, your dealie is going to help you out. And then you can just use cylinders for the arms or if you're getting a little bit fancy you can do cylinders that flatten down into uh, cubes because the lower arm meep, the lower arm is sort of a cylinder that flattens out into a rectangle and you've got your wrist there so uh, it depends, it, it, you know, you don't have to get too fancy with these. It's more about thinking about perspective. And remember that this block of shoulders sitting up here, you want to kind of think of the central pillar of the arm, which is the bone. So understanding your skeleton is going to really help you out here. Boop. His back arm's going like this. And I think his head should be more forward. So digital, meep, move it forward. Yeah. And see all this muscle and stuff like here is hiding the neck, the insert of the neck. But you know it's got to be back here somewhere because there's a whole spine situation that's got to be resolved. I think his, this could be even a little bit less. Boop. But give yourself, say, 10 minutes to do these box guys, or cylinder guys. I like to draw the front of the shin just to see where it's going. And then you can do wedges 
just wedges for feet. And you can then, I mean, you can spend as much time as you want, really. You can look, he's got a little dealy my bobby. So I put my horizon line up too high because I'm looking at the bottom of this thing. Although it's going back in space, boop. And you can use the belt. Just think look of all the perspective landmarks here that you could take advantage of and give yourself a box man. Beep. So again, this is not a pretty drawing. This is not something I would put on Instagram. The proportions are probably a little less shoddy because that's not my biggest strength, but that's not what's important. What's important is you're thinking about the way that these pieces work together and they move in space. And even just practicing drawing regular people just standing, it's good to know how the boxes work. Boop, boop, boop. It's my little faux perspective. But when a person's standing upright, your boxes look sort of like this. And then this, your arm goes back. But it's not, it's not like this. <laughs> okay, your head is a little bit forward, then it goes back. Then your box, your, your torso box, your rib cage box goes forward. Your pelvis box goes back, your legs go forward, your legs go back, and then your legs go forward, see? So everything is a very neat balance. The center of your foot here is going to line up with your neck if you're just standing relatively stable. And if you've got some control over these boxes and you know kind of what uh, a character's center of gravity needs to do, then you can say, okay, here's the neck. It's gonna bring it down. So this is going to be the center of the character's gravity. So now the feet need to make sense with that center of gravity. Let's see? Bring your arms around. So little box people, another really good thing. All right. So the the moral of this story is, don't spend a million hours trying to get beautiful drawings in your sketchbook. Sometimes you can do that. You can say, oh, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, contoury today, or I'm going to I'm really interested in this character's clothes, so I'm going to do a clothing study, or I'm going to do a face study, or a personality study. There's lots of different ways to go about it, but these just quick and dirty and ugly drawings are a really good way to just, like I said, use your arm as a middleman to bring poses into your brain. So you do lots of just ugly drawings, and you're going to think, um, if you draw 10 people standing, you're going to have more baseline posing in your head of just ways people can stand up, ways people can wait for something. If somebody's eating, different people eat different ways. Some people like to get redone right like this. Some people like to sit up like this. But if you're spending two hours very meticulously drawing, like just a guy eating spaghetti, that's, you could have drawn like 20, 20 drawings of t different people eating, right? So this quick and dirty way of drawing is really good for that. And don't feel self-conscious if they look bad. Don't aim for pretty. Don't try and look make your sketchbook look like the guy next to you. There's tons and tons of ways. And this, like, these couple different ways I've showed you, that's just the beginning. That's the surface scratch of how much sketchbook we're going to talk about in the future. Because I love sketchbook. So that's it. Thanks for dropping by. Hopefully this makes sense. I'd love to see any of the sketchbook stuff you're working on, or even just tell me if you're sketchbooking. I'm so happy when people do. It's so fun to sketchbook. Uh, I'm going to do more cartooning style sketching soon. So many things. We're just going to draw so many things, you guys. Like, share, subscribe, all the things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!